In this video, we present a brief history of Portland cement. It arises as the continuation of the late 18th century, early 19th century, regained interest in mineral binders and of the availability of coal, allowing to reach higher burning temperatures in kilns. As explained in a separate video, Portland cement eclipsed hydraulic lime and natural cement, improperly named Roman cement. As with natural cement, Portland cement contains a mixture of silicate and aluminate phases, but of different nature. Overall, however, Portland cement is much more reactive with water than natural cement, so that the final strength develops much faster, on the scale of weeks rather than months. To achieve this, Portland cement is manufactured at higher temperatures. This is for clinkering to take place, whereby part of the mix melts, which allows a much faster formation of the desired phases. Contrary to natural cement that uses clay-rich limestone as single raw material, Portland cement uses separate sources of limestone and clays. This provides a better regulation of composition and properties, something first realized by Louis Vica, a French engineer. Vica also coined the term hydraulic to define the capacity of such binders to harden underwater and therefore in absence of air. His manuscript, Recherche expérimentale sur les chaux de construction, les bétons et les mortiers ordinaires, published in 1818, allows France to claim the invention of modern cement. The term Portland cement, however, was coined in the UK by Joseph Aspdin, a bricklayer from Leeds. He chose this name for marketing reasons, wanting to highlight that this cement, that was grey, allowed to produce artificial stones similar to Portland stone, a highly regarded building stone of the time, and of which the colour was also grey. Beyond this, whether Aspen cement was what is known today as Portland cement remains unclear. Unfortunately, his 1824 patent is very vague, and in particular, we do not know whether he reached high enough temperatures for clinkering to take place. However, the grey colour he obtained may suggest that he did achieve some form of clinkering. Regardless of this, some years later, Aspdin's son, William, but also others, and probably most significantly Isaac Charles Johnson, did reach proper clinkering temperatures and thereby produced cements with similar phases to those contained in today's Portland cement. Reaching such temperatures was clearly enabled by the broader availability of coal starting at the Industrial Revolution. Aspen used a beehive kiln in which raw materials were placed in layers with coal and then fired over several days. Such a kiln, built by William Aspin in 1840, is visible in Norfolk and holds one of the highest levels of heritage protection in the UK. Throughout the history of Portland cement, the development of testing methods played an important role in providing an accepted and quantitative means of performance comparison. For example, the tests done around 1840 and motivated by selecting materials for the London drainage, greatly contributed in demonstrating Portland cement's superiority over natural cement. In terms of manufacturing, apart from a proper control of the clinkering, an important development was realizing that co-grinding small amounts of gypsum with the clinker increases both the open time and the rate of final strength gain. While a separate video provides more details on Portland cement chemistry, 
we highlight here a couple key aspects. From a chemical and mineralogical point of view, Portland cement clinker contains two silicate and two aluminate phases. The main silicate phase is tricalcium silicate, 3CaO.SiO2, noted C3S in cement chemistry. It represents about 50 to 70% of the clinker and reacts with water to produce both calcium hydroxide and calcium silicate hydrate. As you may recall, the stoichiometry of this phase is variable, which is why it is noted C-S-H. As is typical for mineral binders, this reaction produces an increase in the volume of solids, which accounts for setting and hardening. With C3S, this increase is very important, causing the solid to slightly more than double. This is much more than for the pozzolanic reaction, which also produces CSH, but only causes the solid volume to increase by about 40%. The other silicate phase is dicalcium silicate, 2CaO.SiO2, or C2S in cement chemistry. You may remember it as the main silicate found in natural cement. Its hydration also produces calcium hydroxide and calcium silicate hydrate, but in other proportions and at a much slower rate. The much faster hydration of C3S over C2S is largely responsible for Portland cement having eclipsed natural cement. The fact that C3S only forms at temperatures above 1250 degrees Celsius explains that clinkering is necessary to produce it. Today, Portland cement is omnipresent around the world because the raw materials needed are available almost everywhere and its manufacturing is very simple. However, the scale of this success also means that manufacturing Portland cement has a significant environmental impact. In particular, the burning of limestone, which represents 80% of the raw materials, releases large amounts of CO2, accounting for 60% of total emissions. Because of this and of its large size, the cement industry accounts for 6 to 8% of anthropogenic CO2 emissions. This is why finding effective ways to reduce these emissions is a topic of intensive efforts both in industry and academia. In conclusion, Portland cement manufacturing is marked by the separate sourcing of limestone and clays, as well as by very high temperatures allowing clinkering to happen. Thereby, phases formed are highly reactive with water and provide a superior binding capacity. However, Portland cement is a victim of its success in that, because of its so widespread use, its production has a substantial global environmental impact. As elaborated in subsequent videos, solutions to this issue are urgently needed and the most promising one is the use of supplementary cementitious materials to replace part of the clinker.